it's important not to look past this because I, I've heard, and I, and I can't remember specifically who teaches this. It may be the Jews or the Judaizers, the people who look to the Jews for all their answers on understanding Scripture, which, by the way, don't go to the Jews to understand Scripture. Okay, don't think you could get some extra meaning behind what the Bible says. Oh, but let's go and, and, and read up on what the rabbis say and go talk to these guys and see, well, what do they think and what have they historically thought about Jesus Christ or about the Messiah and see how we can fit that in or what extra understanding. Look, they're going to steer you the wrong way. They didn't accept Christ when he came. What makes you think they have anything right about how the tradition should have been Regardless of what they did, even if some of the things they did, they still know to this day, it doesn't matter because they didn't accept Christ. If they're not accepting Christ today, don't worry about getting insight from them because they rejected Jesus Christ. And where I was starting to go with this about John even understanding that he was before me, people will say, oh, this concept, this teaching of Jesus being the Son of God, like, that nobody knew anything about that, that the Jews weren't looking for a Christ that was God in the flesh. Because people will always try to attack the scripture in many different fronts. And they'll say, well, they, they weren't even looking for a son of God to be the Christ. They were just looking for a great leader. Well, that's what the Jews are looking for today. They're not looking for God in the flesh. They're looking for just another, just some great leader, some great teacher. Kind of like... The Muslim religion that we were just talking about this morning that looks to Abraham, they look to Jesus, they look to all these other figures, right? Well, the Jews are very similar. They look to Abraham, they look to Moses, they, you know, obviously they don't believe what was written because if they believe Moses, they believe Jesus and they reject Jesus. So we don't want to be going to them for any of our understanding on anything in scripture unless you just want to know what's wrong. You want to know what's wrong? Go ask some Christ-rejecting Jew. And you'll get the wrong answer. But I don't know what good that's going to do you. Even something, just, just this, this small verse. After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Before all the teachings of Jesus, he knew this. He didn't need to hear Jesus say that he's the son of God. He didn't need to hear that. He already knew that. And he knew that from, at least from his own revelation, that that um, he was going to be baptizing the Son of God. And having this great understanding that he's the Messiah, he's the Christ. He's the Lamb of God. Verse number 31, And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. So he's saying, I didn't know. Not, he didn't say like, obviously he knew him because he's his cousin. But he didn't know up until the time when he baptized him that he was actually the Christ. That he was the one. I, I knew him not. But in order to make him manifest to all Israel, that's what he was doing in his ministry. That's why he was doing his baptism. He says, therefore, I come baptizing with water. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I've been baptizing people so I can say, hey, this is him. This is the Christ. He's the one. Jump down to verse 35. Again, the next day after John stood, excuse me, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. So at this point in his ministry, now he, since he knows who it is, he's just saying, hey, there's the Lamb of God. You know, I'm not the Lamb of God. I came doing my job. I came baptizing. Obviously, he's still going to preach the truth and preach God's word and preach the Bible. But he's saying, hey, there's the Lamb of God, right? You're here with me. Behold the Lamb of God. And he was pointing people to Jesus' ministry because Jesus is the Savior. I mean, wouldn't you do the same? <laughs> you're like, hey, I'm going to preach God's word. I'm going to do what I can. But like, if Jesus were here, he'd be like, hey, there's Jesus. Or follow him. Right. This is what I'm preaching about. This is, you know, there you go. He's right there. Follow him. And this is exactly what John the Baptist was doing. And, and he had the right spirit and the right attitude. He wasn't in it for himself. And he says, behold, I'm, uh, he must increase, but I must decrease. Right? It's, it's about him. It's not about me. 